Hi everyone, it's me, Crafty Witch, and welcome back to my channel. Um, I've been gone for quite a few years. I actually started my channel back in 2007. I uh, can't believe it's been 10 years. Um, and at that time, <laughs> I mean, I had a crappy webcam, I had different crappy webcams and was making videos and it's not like the way people make videos nowadays. You go on to YouTube now and they got like professional equipment and lights and backdrops and all kinds of shit. I wasn't like that back then. And um, <laughs> just made videos on paganism and witchcraft. I was the original crafty witch. I guess now there's a couple of us out there. Um, and that's fine. No big deal, right? It's not like I own the name to it or whatever. Um, it was just a handle that I had been using since like the 90s actually. And, uh, but anyway, so I made videos for a few years, all different kinds of videos. And you can look through my channel. I got like really old crappy videos out there. Um, on all kinds of stuff and it was great. I even taught uh, some courses through an online metaphysical college on things like magical herbalism and whatnot and I I really enjoyed making videos. I enjoyed sharing what I could with people, um, made some friends in the process, some lifelong friends. It's been awesome. And then tragedy, you know, kind of crept into my life and, and I know I made videos, oh gosh, I think the last ones I made and I could be wrong. I'm thinking it was around 2012 ish, maybe. Um, but, uh, yeah. So in 2009, October 2nd, 2009, my dad passed away. I had to take him off life support. And that, for me, was so crippling and sent me into this horrible abyss of, um, sent me to a very dark, dark place. No, I did not use drugs. No, I didn't turn to alcohol, but I went into such a dark, dark place. And it wasn't like, maybe it was depression, I'm not sure, but it was, it was bad. Like I was numb. I was, he was my hero and he was my dad. He was untouchable. And how could this happen to him? And the fact that, you know, we had to meet with the neurologist and take him off life support. I felt like I killed my father. I felt like I had a hand to play in his death and like I murdered him and he died with his eyes open and that just I remember and I could still see to this day um, his face with his eyes open staring at the ceiling like it, it just wasn't good so from there um, shortly after my dad died now this would have been he died in the beginning of October 2009 in November late late November um, I met somebody one word of advice if you ever you know lose anybody significant to you don't get involved in any kind of relationship afterwards it's just not a good idea it's just not good so anyway I'm very much an alpha female he's very much an alpha male and at first it was nice it was nice to be able to kind of sit back and let somebody else take charge let somebody else make the decisions let somebody else take the lead and at first it was nice. I mean, I had been divorced for umpteen years, um, raising my boys on my own. And at the time it was kind of a relief. It was kind of nice. Like it was kind of like, okay, I could just kind of relax a little bit and things will get handled. He'll handle it. And that was <laughs> the beginning of a four year abusive relationship that was extremely difficult to get out of like it was so bad like he threatened my life he threatened to kill my kids it was horrendous and went to the cops and not much was being done and all kinds of crap and it took four years to get out of that and it was just horrible so 
from that point on, that was in 2009, the later part of 2009. Fast forward to 2010, um, seven months to the day that my dad died, my stepmom died in a freak accident. She died May 2nd, 2010. And it was just another blow. I mean, this woman had been a part of my life for like over 20 some years, like 25 years or something. And it was like, she was another mom to me and oh my God, she's dead. And the way she died was horrific and it was just horrible. So there was that. And then the following year, um, then what happened? Oh, later that year, then, you know, my uncle died. And then the following year in 2012, an aunt died and a cousin died or my cousin's um, wife died um, all in a short period of time kind of thing. And then 2013 rolls around and there was my mom. And then I lost her and then she died. So it was like all the people that held a very significant role in my life, my teachers, my guides, they, they, my parents were my best friends. Um, and even like with the, the older people that passed away and then even just this past year, well, 2016, um, my other aunt had passed away. But aside from that, um, up until like 2000 and December 2013 or whatever. It was just this horrendous kind of nonstop cycle of death that was occurring. And it seemed like anybody that meant anything to me um, that I looked up to you as like a guide, a teacher, somebody I learned from, they were all kicking the bucket. They're all dying. They're all leaving. And it was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I can't cope with all this. And it was really, really bad. Um, losing my dad was really bad. But then when it came to losing my mom in 2013, that, that was it. I went from, with my dad, I was like, like in this black fog, like drowning in the black sea kind of thing where you can't see what's going on around you. You can't see anything, everything's just black and you're just drowning in this black water. That's the closest I can describe to it. There was no light, there was just pure darkness everywhere. Then when I lost my mom, oh my gosh, that, <laughs> I went into, um, with my dad I didn't go through the whole anger thing kind of thing, I just went into the that place, that dark, dark place. With my mom, I went straight to rage. I raged. I hated the world. I hated everybody. I, I didn't give a shit about anything. I just was like, fuck it. Like I was just mad, like angry. I didn't care. Like I just, I really didn't care. Throughout that time, also I'm dealing with this fucking asshole that I'm with for like the past four years. And the abuse and I mean it there was physical there was violence there was death threats he was trying to kill my kids he was trying to kill me it was a bad you know tried moving here and there and he'd follow or find me and it was not a good place and it was like hello like how the hell does this happen and um wouldn't even cry at my mom's funeral I just she died and I just went straight into this kind of automatic pilot thing and I was angry and I didn't care like I just um I didn't care who you were I didn't care how big you were I didn't care how tough you thought you were it was like fuck you um you know and I you could have had uh and I'm pagan but let's say you could have God and the Christian devil or whatever in the same room and I would have told them both to fuck off like I was in that anger zone and where I didn't give a shit and I was mad at everything. I was mad at the gods. I was mad at the universe. I was mad at my mom for dying. I was pissed right off with her and that hurt me to be angry at her for dying. 
Um, it was just, yeah, I felt abandoned. I felt, I felt like a 40 year old, cause I was 40 at the time, like a 40 year old orphan. And I had three boys and by then my relationships with them were pretty much strained and really destroyed because of the abusive relationship that I had been in. It was bad. It just it was not good. And I thought I'd be able to make videos a few years ago when I was with him. I think I made one and maybe two and that was it. If I even did, I'd have to go back and look through my channel, but I think I made a video. Um, but yeah, it just, it wasn't good. So then I moved, um, I moved from the town I'm in to the city and I moved back to the town and, uh, in the end I ended up going to, to the farm, to the kind of well to where mom lived and was living out there briefly for a bit. Um, loved it then there was a flood and there was all this other stuff that happened had to move away from there wound up living with my kids and that was tough it took it took about two years to try to repair the relationships that i had with them especially with my middle son and um it wasn't easy i mean he stopped calling me mom i was just yvonne um for the longest time and um, he was hurt, he was angry, and he had every right to be. So, um, from 2000, December 2013 till now, um, it's been a long healing process, I'll tell you that much. But in the meantime, since then, um, uh, a year after she passed away, I finally let myself cry because I refused to cry and I was trying to be strong at the funeral for my kids and at the wake and everything, refused to cry, went straight to that place of anger and I stayed there because I thought I was trying to be strong, but deep down I was afraid. I think I thought that if I cried, I wouldn't be able to stop because um, I was so, so, so close to my mom and she was she was my best friend she was my foundation she was like my spirit guide incarnate uh she was my teacher she she was my advisor she she was my foundation my rock my strength um my courage and she was gone and that was really tough so then um but a year after, so in 2014, I finally came to terms with her death and went through the whole mourning process because I just, I stopped where I was and I just stayed in the whole anger phase. And then from there, um, got into Reiki, um, went on that journey, became a Reiki master, uh, and just started to come into my own I guess you could say part of my resistance and part of my anger was yeah I felt abandoned and all that kind of stuff but at the same time my mom was our matriarch she's gone that means I move up into that position and I was not ready for that I was not ready to be the matriarch of the family and even my, my middle son, who we had that really strained relationship, um, even he said, Mom, well, at the time he didn't say Mom. He was like, you are now the matriarch of, of our family. And that hit me like a ton of bricks because, no, I'm not. I, I'm just Mom. That was my mom's role. She was the matriarch. We all listened to her and what she said was the law kind of thing and I wasn't ready for that I was like I didn't feel like I was worthy I didn't feel like I was 
uh, equipped or, or, or whatever for that. I just, I didn't feel worthy and I didn't feel that it was my time. It was my place. I didn't, um, it was kind of like, oh, you know, how can, how can I be the matriarch? I'm just me. I mean, shit, I got tattoos. I swear I curse like a sailor. I'm, I'm just me. Like, how could I possibly be the matriarch now? Like, no, I don't want to be the matriarch. That was my mom's role. And it took a long time to work through all that and those issues and everything. And finally come to terms and I had gone to people mediums and psychics and everything and I mean they're all telling me the same thing like the ancestors the people on the other side they're really stressing and really wanting you to take this role and I was like nope I'm not doing it I'm not ready fuck that and so I I balked at it I was like no I'm not gonna do it eventually I did and um now that role i i wear those shoes and uh it's an it's odd because i always envision a matriarch as somebody older like my mom um and that kind of thing but i mean in a few years i'm going to be 50 years old i'm going to be 44 so in six more years i'm going to be 50 so I'm getting up there. It's not like I'm this young spring chicken anymore. So I don't know. But anyway, so that was my whole kind of journey through death and my own kind of metamorphosis and and that kind of thing and uh, my own spiritual evolution. I'm no longer angry at the universe or the gods or the powers that be or, or anything like that. I work through all that. And in some ways I can really relate to the goddess Persephone, um, you know, kind of going into the underworld and, and I can relate to her mother grieving the loss of her daughter, but the roles are kind of reversed. I was the daughter grieving the loss of my mother, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah. And I really connected with, uh, different goddesses like Hecate and Morgan and, um, really connected with, the darkness that's within me and within the universe and um, often our focus is so much on the light right and the the positives and that we we look at darkness as something to be feared as something evil and it's not darkness was our first home the womb was darkness there was no light in the womb it was darkness we could hear our mother's voice. We could, you know, hear the, you know, her talking and uh, all that kind of stuff. But we came from darkness. And when we die, if we're buried, we return to darkness. You know, we get buried in the earth or, or whatever kind of thing. For those of you that get buried. Um, it, it's not this evil place. It's our shadow side. And I think... I had been forced to, in a very abrupt and severe manner, come to terms to embrace my own shadow side and my own darkness. And now I do feel that I walk in balance with light and dark within me. And not many people go there. They might pay lip service to it and say, oh yeah, you know, you need to embrace all that you are and blah, blah, blah. But not many people actually really do that kind of soul level work where you actually, you go to the deepest, darkest parts of you, the parts of you that would scare other people away and you really work with your shadow side. Not a lot of people do that kind of soul work and it can be scary. It's liberating it's freeing and there is a warmth within the darkness as well that a lot of people think of darkness as being cold and this horrible thing but it's not um it, there's a balance there and uh being able to learn to work through that was really tough because 
the people I would have turned to for guidance were dead. And so I had to work through that alone and on my own and uh, reconnecting with my ancestors, reconnecting with the gods and uh, came out of it pretty good. <laughs> so here I am, I'm alive, so that's a good thing. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of where things are at. So I know this is a long rambling video and I apologize, but you know, that's, that's me. You don't like it, don't watch it. Plain and simple. So anyway, I am going to be making more videos and uh, kind of getting back into the whole swing of things again, I hope. Um, do you guys have any ideas for any videos? Like, I mean, it, it feels like I've covered so much years ago that what could I possibly say now that can be said that has not already been said by a hundred other people in a hundred other ways or a thousand different ways. Um, I don't want to regurgitate the same kind of shit that everybody else is posting videos about. At the same time, maybe I might have a different spin on it than they would anyway. I don't know. I might be too vulgar for some of you and that's fine. Um, what you see is what you get. Yeah, I'm chunky, I'm old, and I got tattoos, and I swear lots, and that's who I am. And if you don't like it, don't watch the videos. If you want to waste some time and watch some videos, maybe you might learn something, maybe you won't. Maybe you can take something from it and twist it up and make it your own. Hey, all the more power to you, right? So that's where things are at. I'm still Crafty Witch, and... I'm still the same, but I've changed. I'm different, but like in a cool kind of awesome way now. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. Ciao.